Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about um, Langston Hughes. It's an introduction to Langston Hughes's poetry, um, but I think more importantly, it's an introduction to a kind of thinking about African American writing that is incredibly important. There'll be short episodes of this as I talk through this. The key text that I want us to pay attention to is his essay called The Negro Artist in the Racial Mountain. Langston Hughes would have been about 24 years old um, in 20, 1926 when the, when the essay came out. It came out as a part of a debate that he was having with another scholar. Um, and it was asking questions about the nature of African-American writing and really the idea of African-American writing. He begins with a very, very provocative um, uh, premise. The premise is, he begins by saying, look, the other recently, uh, a Negro writer said to him, meaning a black writer said to him, a young black writer said to him, I do not want to be a Negro writer. I want to be a poet. I do not want to be a Negro poet. I want to be a poet. Langston Hughes then goes on to say, meaning, of course, um, uh, several different things which would lead him to the conclusion that this Negro writer did not want to be Negro, didn't want to be black. Um, and it seemed very, very provocative because, of course, the suggestion that a writer might declare that they prefer, they want to be known as a writer rather than as a, a black writer um, seemed to, seemed to, seems sort of unfair, unreasonable. Um, it seems as if um, this, this very valid and very honest ambition um, is being, is being um, denigrated unfairly. After all, um, if, if, if somebody said, um, I want to be the best black writer, in, black writer in the world or the best black doctor in the world, or I want to be the best um, black basketball player in the world, well, that's a little different because, of course, you know, if you are, then chances are maybe you might be actually one of the top. But the point was the, this artist said this thing, and Langston Hughes concluded that this artist had a problem with his race. However, the rest of the essay goes on to demonstrate why he thinks this is a problem. One of the first things that emerges, and it's something to ask ourselves, is how does a Negro artist essentially be black in 1926 um, and be a black writer, right, and not be known for being black? How do you achieve that? If you're a writer and you wanted to be a writer in the world, a poet in the world, and you didn't want to be known as a black person, a black writer, what would you do? Langston Hughes' conclusion was that the writer would have to stop writing about black things, black people, black lives, black experience, black worlds, black imagination, black music, black art. They would have to somehow focus on the things that do not identify them as black, he said. One of the things he said is that if they, if they, if they would have to then, if they were painters, if they were artists, they would have to be, create art that was siphoned out any racial marker or any racial identity. And he then concluded that, as far as he's concerned, the artist who is not willing to be themselves and not willing to celebrate themselves is, is, is not a true artist, is an artist that is failing themselves and is a sorry person. I think where Langston Hughes was going with this argument was that he was, he was suggesting that this artist, this writer, um, suspected or had a fear and an anxiety that black culture was limiting, that black, I, the idea of writing about black experience and black lives and black people was limiting. And he wanted to propose that maybe the way to not do that is to write more expansively. In a sense, this is what Gene Toomer, who we just talked about um, the other day, seemed to, be, seemed to be suggesting. And Langston Hughes says, no, this 26-year-old young man decides that this is absolutely um, not fair and not fair and not true. He begins to posit that inside of black life and black culture and black experience is a universe of information that a writer who still who decides to even write about black experience and black thought and black ideas could could have much to write about for the entire life. In other words, he was celebrating, arguing for the worthiness of the black subject the worthiness of the black subject to create great art. And this is a young man who is at the height of a kind of exciting time in Harlem. Harlem is bubbling, music, dance, art, 
black artists are doing fantastic work and Langston Hughes feels that he's a part of it and this essay is at once a celebration of this notion and and of course it is one that he uses to challenge the idea of this young man. We'll be back and talk about the ways in which somebody like Toni Morrison starts to touch on that very same idea maybe 50 years later. <laughs> 